So hello there and welcome back to the channel and to another classic digital camera review. By the way, is there even such a category? I mean, if there are classic cars and classic collectible film cameras, there should be classic digital cameras, right? So that should mean that I'm not the only hoarder who uh, likes this stuff, right? So. Anyway, here is the Panasonic Lumix ZX-1. I consider this camera to be a one-trick pony. It's not very impressive in features, but it did offer a stabilized 8x zoom power and it was capable of producing 12 megapixel photos in a thickness less than 2.6 centimeters which to you Yanks and um, Brits, that's less than an inch, so pretty impressive. Compare that to the previous, uh, well, the camera that I had, the TZ7. This one is simply a beast uh, in dimensions and also in weight. You can really feel it's much more thicker and weighty. This feels a bit less uh, substantial, but it's not flimsy in any way. At any rate, as all upmarket point-and-shoot Lumix cameras, there's metal everywhere. The frame, the top plate, which is made of this nice uh, stainless steel. The buttons feel very solid, even though I'm sure they're not metal. Even the battery door and this um, tray door here, they're made of plastic, but they're very, very uh, robust feeling and they have this beautiful action. You can never get bored of this mechanical feel right here, a spring action. So only the these parts, even maybe the diaphragm was plastic, it's some sort of plated plastic, but still even this feels the protection over the lens, feels very solid and very um, well made. So exquisite quality, even though the performance of the camera was about average back in 2009 when this thing was launched. So the feel of the gadget gave you a sense of nobility and self-imposed aristocracy in a snobbery sort of way. I think Canon and Sony made better point-and-shoot cameras image quality wise, but they didn't build them like Panny did right here. Or at least that's what I thought because I got this camera new and I didn't even care to cross shop for other brands. Actually, I got this for my wife way back when I still had this TZ7 as sort of a daily driver. The, this one was a bit, the TZ7 was a bit more capable in terms of features, but the ZX1 was just a piece of jewelry. So check out this white, almost pinkish shade of white, I, at least to my eyes. It's simply gorgeous. I, almost see some pearlescent effect here so yeah I sort of fell in love immediately with this camera and well now comes the less impressive part technically speaking so you don't have any manual focus uh, there's low aperture figures at f3.3 to f5.9 so not much in terms of low light or bokeh effect, low light performance, stuff like that. But you sort of expect this. Filming capabilities are limited to 720p and there's only one microphone. But then again, you wouldn't try to, you wouldn't try out for a filmographer with this candy colored camera. I keep coming back to this notion before. This is not a camera review. I don't pretend to be proficient with the technical aspects, but that doesn't stop me from reminiscing. Back to the story. So I got this thing back in 2010. It was a floor model, but it was in impeccable condition and it came with a two-year warranty, which I did not have to use, by the way. 
here's also the original packaging and I have some accessories to it but I just hold them here because I had another panny and I used that USB cable so only small stuff a USB cable a card holster for some reason some connection cables for the TV and the obligatory Lumix charger which was again compatible with the TZ7 and the other point-and-shoot cameras of from Panasonic of the time so nothing really that interesting in terms of packaging or at least that's what I got maybe because this has had been tampered with being a floor model so I didn't get the whole shebang if you will the whole nine yards uh, getting back to this camera it was a good purchase it came at a great price the equivalent of about 130 euros today but compact camera popularity was starting to fade by the time I got it DSLRs were still a big thing and mobile phones were just starting to catch up with the photography tech yet I wasn't really exactly in the position to afford the professional grade camera nor was I willing to pass by what I thought then to be a bargain so I convinced my wife she should get this camera we used it a bit in holidays but not that much I would say about 15 to 30 occasions something like that I didn't really want to sell it partly because it didn't bring in too much cash partly because I feel it's like a talisman a pristine object in great aesthetic condition which I can revisit anytime I wish so here is the battery and this is uh, well uh, something or other model uh, it's less than 900 milliamps uh, in power in capacity but it it does the job quite nicely um, it's a small compact battery and holds f I don't know in this camera I think it should be enough for about 200 photos easily without the flash going of course by the way I forgot to mention in the previous episode you see this lump here this protrusion this rounded arc which goes around the battery I don't really think it has any technical reason to be here so there's no real point to having this design element but still Panasonic cleverly included it in its uh, well later generation point and shoot cameras and it sort of mimics a film roll so it's a retro throw to what a film roll a camera should look like so what do you think am I a hoarder or am I justified to keep these things around stick around because I actually made a pledge as a cleansing ritual I will be giving some some of this stuff away as soon as I reach 1000 subscribers I will only keep what I feel is filled with significance so a lot of cameras PDAs will be given away for free I'll figure out how as soon as I reach 1000 subscribers so wish me luck and I promise that I'll make things interesting so again thanks for for watching and thank you for your attention.